location. And he says to me, I'm going to show you my eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for what all you did for us. Lord, we just had to ask you to help us guide, guide us in our decisions tonight. Lord, bless you for the city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Do I just sit here and talk? Is that fine? Come up front, sit there. Just speak on the line, please. <laughs> right here? That's fine. That's good. Let me just tell you real quickly what we've done. Uh, starting last year, our staff, various members of our staff, came to Vernon. Because of an SRF loan application that came through, the, the DEP, one of their requirements uh, for those loans these days is to have an asset management plan. So. Our staff started coming out and cataloging and inventorying everything you have, all your assets. And it, that, that's all been done. And then we put that together into a format that's called an asset management plan. And in that plan that uh, I brought, I sent it originally to Michelle quite some months ago, but apparently it really did, kind of just sat there and didn't really move. And so, yes, exactly. So we met now. The paper that I gave to you that, that you have right here is an executive summary of that that cuts right to the chase. Look at the large document that you have electronically. Some may have printed some of them up, I don't know. But look at that as the backup documentation for what you have here. And it, this tells you everything that you need to know in a quick seven pages. Specifically, the, the first few pages, like the first just kind of tells you about asset management. The second, uh, you know, kind of the way we did it, where the, the drivers for the thing was, and then finally the processes that were involved, uh, how we come about our stuff. Everybody on the asset management team has quite a lot of experience in the field, so we kind of know what we're looking at. We're, quote, the experts, and we're doing it. There's nothing but good going to come from this for, for, for the city. You know, basically we're coming in and uh, applying our expertise to it and knowing what we're looking at. One thing I will tell you is that your assets seem to be in really good shape. You know, they're obviously being taken care of and this kind of thing. And if you'll notice, uh, in section four, the one that's sideways, mm -hmm. these are our recommendations right there on one page. It's everything that we recommend that the, the city do. And it, just real quickly, at the uh, large fire flow tank at the high school, now if it's my understanding, the city takes care of that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, it has a leak at the bottom. And that's, that's going to be trouble. So that has to be addressed. I've, uh, I've mapped this out for five years, you know, plugging in money that we estimate that it's going to cost to do these kind of things. Uh, next with customer meters, I don't know if you have a meter change out program uh, to change out customer meters once they either uh, reach a certain age, 10 years, or they reach a million gallons, they need to be changed out because they're continuously going to go slow and that's going to cost you money. And that's so that's what it's all about. Uh, million gallons or ten years that that's the industry standard for it so obviously anything that's stuck or not registering you go ahead and replace that but uh, in the plan that you see here on that page four uh, what I've done is uh, I've, I've set it for twice the number so that's 86 meters the first two years and then 43 which is approximately 10 percent of your meters every year thereafter that needs to be an ongoing thing every every year change out 10 percent and then every 10 years you've got you know it just the process just goes on continually but that way you're guaranteed you're going to have uh accurate meters and you're not going to miss any revenue that you get from that and customers want accurate meters anyway so uh the next thing was well one and two uh just right down the road here they have uh the the vertical turbines and those things are real old now uh they may last a million more years there's no real way to tell but as things age, they tend to lose efficiency. They, the electric bills can go up and this kind of thing. So we recommend looking at those and uh, potentially changing those out to something newer, something more efficient. And uh, I've got it stuck in here in years uh, 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. So trying to space this stuff out so there's not a, a whole lot of things. Now, number five is going to be a toughie. Number five is your distribution system. Uh, 
from the numbers that I have, unaccounted for water is really high. Unaccounted for water is, is the difference between the water that you pumped at the water plants and what you sold. And it's 46.7%. 10% is the acceptable amount with most people. So what that means is, by some numbers that you will see in this and in the, in the uh, backup documentation is, that can be as, that, that's equivalent to about 200,000 in, in revenues right there that you're just losing. So it takes a, a, a concerted effort to go out and search for this through, we do this, you know, for free. You know, we come out and we can do leak detection, uh, uh, system audit is another thing. I think one was done in 15, if I'm not mistaken, uh, early, earlier. That probably should be done again. Our people can do that. Uh, but just whatever efforts can be made to try to find and eliminate all these leaks to get that in. Now see, some of it could be in the meters too. So once you get customer meters taken care of, that could be a large part of it. There's really no way to tell until you do it, but all those will go into the same thing. But uh, colder weather, I put this in it as well. Cold weather is a good time to look for leaks. Leaks, number one, the ground is brown everywhere because it's usually drier this time of year. You look for green grass. You know, you see green grass and, and that's a potential spot for a leak. Uh, another thing is, and I've used this successfully myself, is that uh, when it's cold, oh, well, the water mains are like 72 degrees. So when they leak, they steam when it's, you know, the outside air. So all these kind of things, there, there are many types of uh, leak detection opportunities you have. But certainly, uh, if you're interested in us helping you with that, we can do that, you know. And uh, if you, the price that you see here is for outside stuff. Uh, it generally includes labor from your people, you know, like Bulldog and others, you know, going out and physically doing that. Uh, it may not cost, um, it, the leak could be small. I can give you an example. In a system that I operated many years ago, uh, during the, the hurricanes that came in through 2004, we had uh, a system that overnight jumped 50,000 gallons of water a day. Every day, 50,000 gallons of water. That's more than it normally pumped in a day. And we did everything that I've told you. We hired leak detection people to come in. We did everything you could imagine, could not find it. And it was found accidentally at one point by a contractor on a road widening project that hit a line we didn't know was there. And when our people fixed that, he said, what about the other leak? And it was a, a, a line, a service line, that went out into the woods about 100 feet and was broke clean in two. And it had been running full bore for almost two years, but you couldn't see it. It was so far out in the woods. So it doesn't take much to make to meet, to make this amount. So it could be something really small. So you got to kind of get out of outside the box and thinking and looking for it. But something very important on this paper, if you look down at the bottom, the rate increase required per customer per year, rather than at this point, rather than recommend uh, a rate for you, although one is listed in the backup documentation and it's a bit exorbitant, but this shows you that each individual customer to pay for what we've suggested here, it will cost, for example, in 2019, in a year's time, it'll cost them $11.12 in order to do this. And the calculation is by some of our finance people that, you know, if you borrow the money to do this and then you have to uh, pay for it over a fixed period of time with interest rates, what they are. So very knowledgeable people have done that. So as you see, it's not a real big financial impact in order to do what we've suggested here. But other aspects to an asset management plan are uh, using some type of computer maintenance management system. And that's, uh, we use a system called Diamond Maps to collect all this data. There's some photographs in that of it. It costs like 20 bucks a month. I think if you want everybody to be able to use it in the town, what is it like, how much is it for? Under 500 connections, I think it's $35 for unlimited users. $35 a month, and it's an online thing. It is so accurate. We That's what we've used to catalog all your stuff, and uh, I have physically myself been collecting data in a system and had another fellow doing it across the street, and I was sitting do, entering a uh, fire hydrant on mine and saw what he, the valve he was entering show up on mine. I mean, it's immediate. It's right there. It's You just can't beat it with just a simple tablet that you can have internet connection on, somebody can go in and in real time change out an asset. Let's say Bulldog changes a, a lift station pump. He goes in and finds that lift station pump on the, the data list, changes it right then, and it's all done. So it, the other thing it can do is you can do work orders with it. It'll, uh, you can schedule the asset management tasks, like, uh, and I can help make 
a, a plan, a specific plan for your system where you'll take and uh, <coughs> every pump that needs to be greased every six months, it'll automatically kick you out of service order to do that. So you'll be reminded of it. Uh, it's always better to maintain something than it is to, to pay to fix it or replace it. So that's the idea behind it. And that's another reason the DEP wants this. Unfortunately, there are some places that borrow money to, let's say, put in a generator. And they put the generator in, they don't maintain it. First time they use it, they burn it up because it didn't have any oil in it. And then they go back to DEP to want it replaced. So that kind of stuff has got to stop. This is just to help people. And I've, I've got a lot of years in computer maintenance management systems. I have seen the other side of this coin. And trust from somebody who knows, Diamond Maps is a winner. It does really well. It's extremely cheap. Diamond Maps. And I think the, the web address is in that. We can give, get you some brochures on that as well. Uh, it sounds like we're selling it, but, but quite honestly, I've, I've, we had a system in a, uh, where I was at before coming to uh, Rural Water that used an iMain, and it was the most complex thing you could imagine. People were having to print out a thousand pages of stuff every day. The whole idea is to keep it paperless to a large extent. So that's that's really what's going to really help you. And then we kick out. Can you put, put in the thing in there to take the Yes, and the other thing that I have that I will give to, to the city is, and I think I mentioned this to you, all of the data that I've collected on spreadsheets and various formats and all that kind of stuff would be really useful to you guys. So I'm going to get it to you like on a thumb drive so that you have that. You can build anything from valve, valve exercise programs to hydrant testing. Anything can be done with that just by deleting columns and adding this, that, and the other thing. But it'll have all your assets listed on it and all of the, the massive amount of information that we've been able to gather from it, from serial numbers to model numbers and uh, install years and that kind of stuff. But you'll get all that stuff too. But the way the process would work at this point, uh, like I say, this is, is the key. This right here tells you all about it, everything there is to it. And uh, it cuts it down into a, a format that you can see, you can read, you don't have to look at 90 pages of stuff and try to figure out what am I looking at. It'll, um, um, it'll save you right here. So. The next step would be for you guys to adopt it. Now in this, the last page of this, is a sample adoption resolution. And, um, and, that, and by that, the town would be agreeing to uh, adopt this, officially adopt the asset management plan, and then to move forward with it, okay? And uh, it, it's not something you're expected to do all at once. No one expects you to come in and just just hit the ground running with uh, you know people with clipboards and suits going out and doing stuff. You have to uh, it, you have to get into it. Jason, my friend here, he's an engineer. He's on our team. He's he's the smart guy on the team. Um, he's backing me up tonight. But uh, uh, the, the term "living document" he uses a lot, and that's what this is. This plan can morph and change into anything that you want it to be. It it can be tailored. Uh, as you go, trial and error will come into it as well. Uh, you may, this way of doing it may not be quite right, so you realize that pump may need to be greased quarterly or something. So there's a lot of different things that can be done with this. But by and large, um, anything that you do will supply you with the information to do it and the expertise behind it to make it a success. Do you have any questions about it or anything? I don't know. I've learned a lot too just from listening to you. Well, I'm very passionate about it because this is one of those things where nothing but good can come from it and it's nothing but to help you and the, the residents of the town. We don't need to be losing water. No. no. Not that much. I appreciate you doing the legwork, breaking it down. Like you said, Hey, I, we're doing the wastewater plant now, as a matter of fact, and uh, when I was here last, it was 29 degrees and I was, it was so cold when I was collecting asset data at the wastewater plant, I, I would go till my fingers wouldn't move anymore to enter stuff on the thing. I'd have to go sit in the truck and warm my fingers up. We're diligent if nothing else. So, And now, in fact, we're going to be collecting some data. I thought I was going to help us tomorrow and possibly Wednesday a little bit. Finish it up, the wastewater. I'll be doing your wastewater uh, plan as well. And uh, it will be, uh, as, I've, as I've gotten more experience, they've, they've morphed and become a little more concise. And I like the new versions that we have, so your wastewater will considerably be different than this. But and it'll have this as the first thing you see when you open it up, and so uh, you don't have to look through everything else behind it. You can glance through it and see where all data came from. 
but it will have this executive summary in the front. So um, uh, we're uh, it's it's a wonderful thing for the city. We appreciate it very much, Mr. Thompson. Joe, you have any questions? I don't. I appreciate it. I would. Jason Sparks, um, Paul did an excellent job explaining things, and I just wanted to tag on to what he was saying about the DEP requiring these as part of the SRF. Right. The town adopts the asset management plan, uh, then you're eligible for a 0.1% interest rate reduction, right. which your interest rate will probably be 0.5 or something, so that's a pretty good, pretty good break in your interest rate. And they, uh, as Paul mentioned, the implementation of it is a is an ongoing process. There will be a follow up by DEP to see how well you know the town is implementing the uh, maintenance management system. They want to see that that preventive maintenance is being performed on these assets that they're granting money to these systems to install and rehabilitate. And it also increases the chances of having. What, we, what they call principal forgiveness. A bigger portion of what the money that's loaned will be grant money. And that's, that's what the adoption's all about. And we've even seen systems get into it two, three years and have the whole principal forgiven altogether. They do a good job of implementing this plan and they want to see work orders that have been done, filled out by Bulldog and your other staff. And um, I just wanted to add that in about the SRF program. See, I told you he was a smart one. <laughs> now, one thing I want to point out, though, and I don't, I don't, I don't want it thought differently, but it's obvious from seeing the town and seeing the, sh the city and seeing the shape that the facilities are in that this man and those under his charge are doing a good job of it. In essence, what's going on in this asset management plan is probably already happening. The plan and its adoption we will just be able to to, cat to catalog it and capture that it's taking place and document it so that the, his efforts will be down on paper. Yeah. There, I know he has a lot of books, but he does the generators and all that. Mm -hmm. so, you know. He can put it all in there as well. And one last thing I've left out is that budget time. This is meant to be used as a tool during budget time as the work is performed during the year and the assets are uh, given a different condition rating and different criticality ratings. A new pump is installed, well then that one's, it's not as priority as the pump that didn't get installed. So it's meant to be adopted each year, you know, and used as a tool for your budget determinations and what the systems need to have. Well, that's something uh, we can do too, because we can, when you revisit the plan annually, uh, you know, we'd be glad to meet with you and look it over and see how it's gone. And the other thing that we're working with is uh, towards and, and intend to do as we go forward is provide ongoing support. In other words, I don't want to just dump this on you and then there you go. See you later. I, I want to make sure that we support you in it and help you implement it and to make it a success. Okay. That's that's the whole idea behind it. Okay. Good deal. Ronald, you got any questions for me? We appreciate this very much, and we, we will adopt it. These adopt it if we have to adopt it. We're going to. Uh, I'm sure Tracy and Bill all work together on setting that program up. It'll be a lot of easier. It'll be a lot easier once you get it on computer, and that's what DEP wants. They'd rather have it right in instead of coming looking at a lot of well, you know, it's funny that you would say that because that's one of the reasons for this program is they want the, what was the word they use? Vol, volume, Centri vo yeah, voluminous. Voluminous, yeah. The amount of paperwork involved in some of these things. Mm -hmm. I told you about systems that I saw that they printed out over a thousand pages in a month for people to fill out. Where's the, and then someone had to, someone had to go and print all that, then someone had to fill them out, then somebody else had to go in and re-enter that data. And this is all, this system is all done by the same person standing there, yeah. so. It, it really will help. And once again, you know, when it, you know, I want to personally help when it's when we're setting up, you know, the in, in Bulldog, we could get together, sit down at a table, and go through that at, that asset list, the full list, and see, okay, what do you need to do this one? What do you need to do that one? You know, what's recommended on this one, and that kind of thing, and help you any way I can. Okay. So.
So we'll, we'll try to do that in the pretty near future. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, we appreciate it very much, Mr. Thompson. We appreciate it very much, too. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for giving us time. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Hall, Travis, you're up. You have a spare copy of paper. Are you going to speak? Okay. Tell us, tell us, tell us what you want to do. Okay. So basically, what we're doing is, is uh, we are going to be providing, hopefully, uh, internet service throughout some parts of Washington as the text is needed. Uh, we're going to be have our distribution uh, in Vernon, where our uh, internet's going to be brought into. We're going to provide on the outskirts of Vernon, people who are in great need of, of good, stable, reliable internet service. Plus, we're going to be using the, hopefully, y'all approve it, the tower and the water tower in Vernon. And the exchange, we, we will provide the city of Vernon free internet service, so y'all can y'all them to cancel your previous, your current internet service with Mediacom, provide you faster speeds, faster download speeds, faster up, up, up those speeds. And also, we're going to be shooting over to uh, Mud Hill for, to provide Bonnet Pond uh, Road, Pioneer Road, uh, City of Walsall. Uh, but they are without their, I think it's like 1.5 download or whatever they can see. And it's, it's in and out, part of my shit here, burning in and out all the time. Just trying to provide the county with some uh, people in the county some better, stable, more reliable internet service. That's so I'm trying to ask for y'all too. What do you need out of us? Basically, what we're going to need out of y'all at this current time is access to this 80 foot tower. Um, uh, basically, we're going to be just using that to shoot. We'll, we'll put on, we'll put some horns, which is basically uh, allow people in this area to be able to shoot to it. But mainly, it's going to be shooting to the water tower. And because of the height of the water tower, we have to have that and shoot over to the Mud Hill Tower, which we've already obtained from the from the camp already. You know? But in the future, we'll take it off of the water tower, hopefully, and build your 80 foot tower up to a probably 190 foot tower. All expense paid for by me, um, you know, in compliance with FCC and FAA rules, which I think anything under 200 feet is without permitting from, from what I read on their website. We'll have to do that with no lighting and all, and I'll pay for all that. And then we'll take take the stuff from the water tower, put it onto the, the tower, and better provide more people. So you need to put this on the agenda for me. Um, we will need proof of insurance. General liability insurance? Yes. How much do y'all have? I have a million to do it. You got any questions for me? So you're saying you put this on our water tower? Yes, ma'am. We put some sector antennas, which is basically, it's kind of like a cell phone, but not not cell phone signal in a way. Okay. It's going to be a point and point kind of thing. Yeah, I was just playing it. It's very minimal, but the, the sector is way like seven pounds a piece. So it's, okay. it's, it's, you won't even know it. Travis, we'll put it on. Are you responsible for damages this if there's any damage? Well, what you would do is on um, a county gun, you would hold, um, you would make, make a sign a uh, whole policy agreement. And then my general insurance, if there was any damage, was seven pounds attached to the gorilla and we'll do and we'll do the damage at all. So but we still need that. Oh yes ma'am. What what are requirements y'all we'll we'll have it on the agenda Monday night. What I need to price is what y'all gonna need for me to put that on my general liability so I'm gonna say should just name the city department as an additional Uh, would it be okay if we exited? Yes. I wasn't sure if it was allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're excused. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Travis. Good Thank you. 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 Thank Bird. I know I can't thank his name. Uh, asbestos report on the old buildings. Uh, but I will get that engineer tomorrow. I'll send him a copy so he can verify everything. 
it does have some stuff now. Yeah. It does have some stuff. So once uh, we do that two week notice, so the the yeah. we won't pick it up at this point while we're permitting. Yeah. So, um, okay. That's something we've got. Yeah, that's what you're feeling. Like I said, just be one or two small at the time. Yeah, but since we do it, we need to just that notice. Don't cost anything to get the notice to go through it. This is the big part of it right here. And I was just thumbing through it. There's some friable and some non friable. A lot of the non friable they'll let us wet it down, but there is some friable in there, so I just want to fix it down. Yeah. So, um, but we can figure something out. I know a guy in um, Carry it back here. What we're talking about is carrying it back here to the old retention ponds and putting it in. So you want to kill that? Put it in the old retention oh, ponds, yeah. and when it started building up, we'll get some of the field and put it on top of it. But you can check the DEP that they won't let us no. use old retention ponds, even though they've been abandoned. But I'm gonna contact Gary Clark, which is what he's way on up the ladder. You know, Gary. Well, that would be maybe see if he can help us out with that. Is there is there any way possible? Just to be on the safe side. Is there any way that we can work a deal out with uh, Washington County and just haul it to their their pit? I'm working on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It'd be nice. If we did that. Uh, that, that's going to, have to go forward to board, but I've already talked to Trey about that, and he's talking to their their engineer, and that going to let us know. Okay. But if it's if it's not asked. Anything that's not asbestos, I'm sure it would take. The concrete's considered clean fill, so I right. would get rid of that anywhere. So, but just the rest of it, it'd be nice if they just wait for Keep the local fees or something yeah. just to help you guys out. Yeah. Can you let them place concrete? And I'll tell you, it would be really nice if y'all had a big yard. Can stockpile it and then when y'all get ready to do these roads y'all can crush it i ain't got a guy that can come in and crush it there's your base material and then you can run it as a grant money for a leak project and it's considered recycling so y'all could have the first leak project i did the first leak project by county for the that library up there and i use crushed concrete for recycling you know if y'all had a big stockpile you can use it on your banks and then also to have them come crush it and you got your own Base material, you don't have to worry about. You know, we about that. We can, I don't see why we couldn't store it in the retention ponds. They're not there abandoned by the. We could use yeah, it. Now the concrete's considered a clean fill, so you can just stockpile it. You know, stockpile, you'll get a big road project, and just crush it, and use it. There's your buddies. I thought about that. You can get some good grant money, too, so. But uh, I'll make sure the engineers at, at the meeting next Tuesday night. We still figure about that other problem we've got anyway. All right, Mike, you're up. Oh. <laughs> um, it's been uh, a little busier than I'd like at the fire department. We've had several calls just recently. Um, we did talk to Al Gosser about the radios. Um, they did extend the program through the beginning of the year um, so the radio program is available to us um, unfortunately last time it was too close to the end of the year and we weren't going to be able to get everything to go through um, the price went up just a tad bit um, it's going to be $360 a radio after the 50-50 grant um, Al's going to be able to put in for the grant get the radios, what he's doing is turning in old radios to get the price down to that price. Um, when he puts it in, he's getting five, we're getting five. Um, they'll be $360 a piece after the 50%, 50, 50 the 50-50 grant. Um, the initial cost is the 
seven hundred and twenty. Yeah, seven hundred twenty dollars a radio. And then um, once the grant money comes in, they'll send you a check for the other half of it. Um, grand total is going to be eighteen twenty-five. Oh, um, our ISO ratings, we did get the information back. We are definitely a five station as of, it goes into effect April 1st of 2018. So we have done great with that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you watching, I've done very much. I looked into that and what it is, and that's up to the individual insurance company. Yep. Those that actually follow the ISO ratings, the, the people that have insurance with those companies will see a rate drop. Others will not. Only about 50% of the insurance companies are following that anymore. It used to be like 95% of them, but now they've gone to it's 50-50 on it. But for those lucky ones that have the companies that still follow that, they should see a, a decrease after April 1st. You got anything else? Any Any questions, questions for Mike? Does that pertain to new construction as well? In other words, would a new business coming in on 77, for instance, I mean 79, would they recognize a savings because of the ISO of five? Depending on the insurance company, if they follow with the ISO ratings, they will notice their rate will not be as high as it would have been before that. Because I can understand maybe not reflecting a savings or going down on a premium, but with a new premium. The new premium will be lower than it would have been where we were a seven. Their ratings will be, you know, their insurance will be lower than it would have been before. And another selling point for, yeah. for businesses coming in on the floor, yeah. certainly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ronald? <coughs> All right, here. Big I was asked to uh, locate a sewer jitter. We uh, tested it out today. That one in the picture on the trailer. It works beautiful for what we got uh, in mind running these lines. Yes. Let's see. It's got a Caterpillar diesel motor in it. It's pretty nice. <laughs> you don't want to hear the prize. You will be surprised how much labor that machine is. Uh, I mean, it, it killing them what they're doing. <coughs> so you go and pull one and put a sewer line, and all you're doing is knocking a hole in that car. Uh, and with this, with a clean line, okay. and he won't. He's not going back every week. It's a, it's a cost up front, but in the long term, the labor savings, it'll, it'll wind up pay for itself. And then, just to give you an idea, it's completely to 60 grand. So, uh, Bear in mind, we should have uh, $68,000 coming back from FEMA that we've already spent at the sewer yard. Yeah, so right. What did you say it is? It's, uh, I think they work out a price about 56. You check on, we'll still have to go out to bid on that. Man. Yeah. Anyway, you check on the warranty on that? No, I, I did not get a chance to, but I will. Uh, the belt press is still down. They come and got the uh, screen. They said it is not the screen, it is the computer that controls the screen. Okay. They're working on getting a price for it. Have Mr. Roller come out and see if we could just uh, switch it over to switches. Uh, he's working on that, but he said it's going to be extremely complicated to do. And he said probably the best bet is to get that to get the gear. Yeah. So once we do that, we can go back to wasting. We can get a lot of wasting done. We can go back to setting sludge. Yeah, they're they're wanting to haul right now. Yeah, but we can't take it. Uh, how much you know how much money have we generated since we started doing that? Just this. Well over ten grand. Yes. So that that is a benefit to the city we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. so, that's just another way to pay for your silver machine. <coughs> They're uh 
starting uh, tying in these lines out here. We may have some uh, interruptions in water a few places, moss heel, uh, McFatter for a little while, long enough for them to get the uh, lines tied in. Make sure you let schools know if something goes. I don't think the schools will be infected. It's probably a couple houses, about five at a time, something like that. Nina is uh, the contractor on the waste sewer and water closet started. He's uh, wanting to start in February. Okay, we'll need to find out exactly when uh, because, and how much material he needs here ahead of time because we're working with the county on that material before we stop and all that. Uh, I give him a call. Uh, we know what he needs to get the tray. I get it in here. They would, if you would go, as they sent us a set of drawings for exactly what we're doing, so we can let Mr. Goldie know what you let the public know what we're doing. The set of drawings, he is not uh, giving us one. Do not believe. Um, not if you would go, if we can go ahead and get it, so we let Mr. Goldie know what we're doing on the sewer water project. He'll put it online, and everybody will know. Uh, and on the outages, we can actually, you know, let them know even if it's just the day before, if, if we uh, know. That would probably be appreciated out there too. What do you generally do? Just hang a hang a tag on their door or something to tell them that there's going to have, they're going to be out or yeah, it's just going to be like fatter tomorrow. So if you can like start that tracing right here to kind of you have work tomorrow. You have work. Thank you. If you can trace it, she can let Mr. Gilbert know ahead of time and they will be on. On the uh, website. Yeah, uh, yeah it'd probably be 30 minutes to an hour, maybe. But you'd be surprised. How, well, you won't be surprised. You know how people. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you're in the shower and every water goes out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest value there is at least you can point to the website or the or Facebook page or whatever and say, we made an effort in good faith to let you know. Correct. I got my website in my pocket. Telephone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. I mean, that's the best course of action if you're able to tell them individually. I promise you, everyone in this town's got this number. <laughs> <laughs> they call you on the bulldog. Right quick. <laughs> that's the first one it goes to. You got anything else? That's it. Anybody who's going got? Uh, um, just a couple. I'll get Rick get you this week, let you know when the ball starts. Uh, they're going to start working on the deals tomorrow. But I'll get Rick Gibson to get with you. Um, we're shooting. As um, a matter of fact, we shot today up to 1 o'clock when it started raining. Um, we've got all three principals at the schools that are going to participate in a series that will do a video um, informational series talking about their individual schools. Joe Taylor is going to participate talking about the school district at large, um, again, tying into that reasons for wanting to be here. Um, I think all of the stuff that you've talked about tonight as far as these proactive money saving uh, implementation, um, that's huge. And to let the people know that you've got a fine eye on saving that money um, doesn't do anything but make you look good. So um, all of that should be part of that message. Um, the one concern um, at this point is um, we cannot change over your website without taking down your email. Right now, you've got eight or ten people um, who are who are getting emails, and I'm presuming that the clerk is probably the most important one, probably the only one that is of huge concern. I know that the fire department you, you, has got an yeah, email. Address. Do you use that? Rare. Yeah, I'm presuming that most of those other email addresses are not being used. It's, it's mainly going to be traced. Yeah. So what will the other half of that um, is that um, much like what Michelle experienced in, in her office is that. You're probably going to want to have uh, a more secure email system. Um, obviously, at any given time, somebody can produce a public records request, and you're going to have to turn over emails anyway. But um, you want to be sure that those emails are always going to be there. And right now, what you've got is not secure. So um, it's going to be a two-step process. We're actually building your website now. And I was hoping that tonight I'd have a, a link that I could show you, but we've run at that point yet. We'll have another domain name that'll point to it and then once it's up to your satisfaction then we'll change it over at that point your email addresses will change so um, there'll be an educational period of time that we can tell people and you can send proactively out to all the people that you normally 
email with, hey, after this date, my email address will be changed to this. So we'll help you get through that. We're not going to just let it drop. But that, that is something that's going to cause some heartburn um, at this level. So there's not there's no option. Um, and right now you're paying six or seven or eight dollars a month for the service that you get at the website, and, and it's really not doing any good. So anyway, it's it's all good. The, the note is positive, and we're moving forward. But that's that the email being the one thing that is is a concern of ours. That um, much like this gentleman, we'll be getting calls if your email goes down. So we, we don't want that to, to happen. Uh, but yeah, everything's working out really good, and we're getting some really good aerial stuff with drones, um, as well as our regular uh, video and photo. And the biggest biggest I thing I took away from, and today I had a long conversation with Brian Revere, he's excited about being able to participate in telling people the improvements that you've had in your local school system, in his case, the high school, obviously. Um, and that's and that's huge. If you've got somebody coming in who's going to relocate a business, that's one of their biggest concerns is your educational system. People moving here. Yes. Education. Yeah, absolutely. And they're not going to move here unless there's jobs, and, and, and the, a business is not going to move here unless there's good education to support that person moving here. So, yeah. So we're all good. That was basically it for me. Any questions? Anybody got anything, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, Mr. Bird. I just got one question. What about? Um, I know you want to bring in businesses and stuff. Um, do you guys have anything allocated in the city limits of land that could be zoned a light industrial? We've got two, there's more than two people. Um, and I, it, I mean, is that something you guys want to do? Does the city own any? No. Have, have we talked about talking to some people about it? Yes, we've talked about it. That's something we probably kind of need to prioritize this year too. I'm just, and I'm just thinking outside the box, you know, um, a lot of people don't like industry, but like a free cast company well, coming in here, it would bring in a lot of jobs, yeah, and it's very clean. located, everything is clean, you know, it's just basically pulling boxes, yeah. you know, it's, it's a big deal, you know, but I mean, if y'all have a plan, of, or could get the land, get it zoned at, away from everybody, you know, with like 50 foot buffers all the way around that we don't see it, and just, you know, building precasts and bringing some jobs, because this is a good central location for north, south, east, west, you know, it's a good, it's a good little hub area, and it would bring jobs in, you know, but just getting that zoning requirement right there. Yeah. Yeah. The plus, if you could have, offer an Athlorum tax break for the first I, five years. I would actually bring my business to Vernon. If y'all do that, and I would support thirty people. I mean, out of burners, you know, and it would get. If you guys could look into that, because I'm getting tired of driving. When we look at planning, when we just look at the Washington County Planning Commission, they talked about. You know, when we talked about going out on um, the little church street all the way out. They talked about making that an industrial area where we could get the property. Just. It would be industrial. You know how church people go out and it turns into a dirt road? That land out there, I don't, we don't know what belongs to. Mm -hmm. They talked about that mm -hmm. and they talked about they talked about up on Pioneer Road too. Yeah. Trying to acquire um, a place up there or just in the Can you guys add mm -hmm. Can we add eggs? We're probably fixing to add eggs to crop here across the creek. Yeah. That's owned by their long term housing project. Just, just ask and see because I mean I'd love to do it. I mean, you know, I mean like I said, buffers and bring some jobs. I mean there's no chemicals involved, you know. So just something that we bring business and industry here. You know, light industry you want to be in the green one. Yeah, I'm just something to ask. Two people I can talk to, you know. I know one of them is I said in the past he's interested, so there is there's not sewer there, but but, but there is water to be tough to get sewer there. 
Well, the biggest, the biggest thing is you know, you're only looking at a couple of bathrooms on five or seven things, yeah. and then we can get water there. Then do that. We've got yeah. there's water there. Isn't there a piece of property for sale on the corner of Church and Moss Hill? Where at now? On the corner of Church and Moss Hill? Yeah, but Moss he, you're talking about how many acres you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Your minimum, He's not minimum, but you really want like maybe 30, 30, yeah. 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 Just, I mean, if, if you guys see it, uh, you know, and the biggest thing is planning and making sure before you go and make an investment like that that you can do it. Yeah, you know, so then that's the reason I'm just asking because I'd love to, I've been talking with you guys for a while about it. It's just fun, you know. See? There's 80 acres on the side of the school for uh, my property. They cut it right now. And yeah, the lady that owned it, a real bad shape. So the kids are still there. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's going to buy it. The school board's going to buy it. Eventually, to the side of their property. Or something to do with the county will end up buying it. It's a three piece of property. And if all come close to the city limits, I don't know for the city limits. It's a piece around from here. The lady okay. there that joined the school, we joined the school property uh, on the two sides. Uh, it's cool on the 80 acres, and there's an 80 acre piece they don't want. I'm talking about what you have on the top. Uh, and I know who they talked about. Yeah, so there's, there's 80 acres. She's not in good shape at all. No, she's in bad shape. So if something does happen, we bring more to find out if we can do it. You want to make everybody happy. So, and then bring more. So just something, just you know, a little bit of communication. Kind of Do you know about it? I just, man, I, you I guys want to check it. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll check into it, but that's something I need to bring, you know, to you guys, and we need to find out yeah. if they would be opposed to it. Because I hate making the best to sit on the property, you know. I'm sitting on too much property in the front end. Right. The only thing you've got to worry about is the, the, the guy, another guy, at least the property in front. He found out he's a buyer. So he's in the buyer property. You know, he's got almost two thousand acres. And next to it, he just don't know it's up for sale. But that would be a, a good location there. Yeah, he's in the buyer property. You need to check anything. I don't know a word of boundary line clock before we go to it's not far. Mm -hmm. yeah, see any things good? Is it in here at church? In Parkland? No, we go down the road a little bit. Jerry Brock is in the city. Yeah. Oh, he's in the city. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. got a word of It's right there, Patrick. In fact, it doesn't Jerry Brock. Huh? He's got the last water meter down there. So Jerry's got the last one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's almost the last resident. The water's the chicken. Did the car ever have one on there? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 I did it just to kind of control that area, yes. you know. Thank but you. I, I saw that, that, you know, you can't have any heavy trucks. I'm like, and this guy's clean, his place, I don't know if y'all been to it on 231. It's they nice, really nice, you know. And that's, it'd be great for this little area. They sell Amish stuff, all them butters. And he's a good dude. I mean, if you ever meet him, he's a good dude. I've been there a few times. I'm happy. <laughs> so, but it's really nice. We're it, happy you know, that you put, nice. we're putting that. So, we're very happy. And then I'm going to start working on that. Tire shop here shortly. I just I had a little too much going on, so. Yeah. So but we're happy that you're gonna do a tire shop. Yeah. Oh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got to have it for my stuff. I mean, y'all gonna see a lot of my stuff in there, but I mean, but I am gonna do a couple of things. It just keep me busy when it's not. And it'll be really upscale and nice, you know. And one more thing for we go. I don't appreciate you, Mr. Bird, uh, giving our young people. I know yeah. there's a lot yeah. of the seats up there at George's Preston. Appreciate you giving the young people a yeah, chance to that. work and start out. Uh, I see it up there, and there's another guy at the seafood market. I told you uh, he hires a lot of kids from Dean Bozeman there, and 
I appreciate it, you know. You know, you know, people you know, y'all understand because there's a lot of work in and a lot I gotta of have a place to work, man. You know, we all start off, you know, we might always do the right things, but we learn from from that. So yeah, we load our hay and watermelons from my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well I work on the shrimp boat, so it was <laughs> Uh, well, nobody has anything to work or down and go to the house. Because it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimmy, excuse me. Jimmy, you got anything?